My kids love to play chess and checkers, so I thought it would be fun to make a nice game set complete with storage for all of the pieces. I'm partnering with Inventables today to show you how I made this chess board and pieces using my X-Carb CNC. The board is a good size with plenty of storage for all of the game pieces, and you can also store decks of cards, score sheets, and whatever else you need for a friendly or not so friendly family game night. This project was a fun challenge using new to me techniques and woods, as well as my first epoxy inlay. I purchased this gorgeous ambrosia maple from my local hardwood store and got to work milling it down, first cutting the pieces to size on my miter saw, then moving over to my bandsaw to resaw the wood into thinner boards. I planed them down to their final thickness of just over a quarter inch, then glued up the boards, clamped them together, and let the panel dry overnight. This will make up the game board. I then got started milling down the wood that would make up the sides of the box, ripping them down to width on my table saw, then resawing them on my bandsaw. I ran them through my drum sander to take out the saw marks and get them to uniform thickness, which was about 3 8 inch. I set up a makeshift sled on my table saw to cut the 45 degree miters on one end of each of the boards. I then measured and made a mark on the sled for the second miter to be cut, making each of these pieces 16 inches long. These pieces will have grooves cut into them for the top and bottom pieces to fit into when the box is assembled. I'll get to that in a later step. The bottom of the box is made of walnut, so I milled all of those pieces down to size on my bandsaw, then moved on to my planer and table saw. I glued up the pieces and clamped them to sit overnight. The next day, I squared up the game board on my table saw, then moved over to my drum sander to sand the panel flat. I set the board up on my X-Carve to begin a two-stage carve, roughing out the checkerboard first. I designed all of this in easel, and I've linked to all of that in my blog post tutorial, which you can find a link to in the description below. I used a quarter inch down cut bit to rough out all of the squares in the checkerboard. While this carve takes a little while, the two-stage process is much faster than using one single bit to do the entire job. Once the squares were roughed out with the quarter inch bit, I moved on to a 45 degree V bit. These bits are not listed in easel, so you'll have to manually add them, but it's as simple as plugging in the bit size on the menu. Once the roughing stage is completed, the spindle moves back to the home position. You swap out the bit and set it up to carve again, this time choosing the detail carve option. It automatically makes the toolpaths for just the detailed area of the carve. With the game board carved, I cut it down to size on my table saw and then it was ready for the epoxy inlay. Since ambrosia maple has holes bored into it from beetles, I taped off the holes on the back side of the board to prevent an epo any epoxy from seeping out. I flipped it over and then mixed up my two-part tabletop epoxy. You want to mix the epoxy for a good 3-5 to five minutes to ensure it's thoroughly mixed, otherwise you end up with soft spots or the epoxy won't properly set altogether. Once it was mixed, I added the pigment powder and again mixed it thoroughly. I poured the epoxy into each of the squares, doing my best to not overfill them. I'm pretty new to epoxy pours, so I did end up filling them a little too full, but I'd rather them be too full than not end up full enough. It just means a little extra sanding later. I originally mixed up 8 ounces of epoxy, which turned out to not be enough probably because I overfilled the squares, so I mixed up a little more to finish off the board. I ran my heat gun over the board to get out any air bubbles, and also swirled the epoxy a bit with my stir stick to give it a little more character. I let the epoxy cure overnight. I should also note that the epoxy needs to be done in a climate controlled environment. If it's too hot, it will set up before you can even finish pouring. I did all of this inside the house to avoid that. While the epoxy cured, I worked on the sides of the boxes. I set my table saw blade to cut a quarter inch deep groove and set my fence so the groove would start one quarter inch in from the edge of the board. I ran a groove on each side of the boards, then moved the fence in another quarter inch. 
I grabbed a piece of scrap wood to use as a tester to determine if the groove would be wide enough to accept the top and bottom panels of the box and actually got lucky on my first try. I then grabbed the sides of the box and cut the remaining grooves in each edge. I took the bottom panel out of the clamps and sanded it flat on my drum sander. I then took it to my table saw to square it up and cut it down to size. Once the epoxy was cured, I took it back out to the shop to sand off the excess. I started with my orbital sander and an 80 grit sanding disc, but quickly realized I could save myself a lot of time just running it through the drum sander. The only catch with the drum sander is that I had to clean the sanding belt every couple of passes to prevent the epoxy residue from gumming up on the sanding belt. With the resin sanded flat, I went back to my orbital sander and gave it a final sanding with 220 grit sandpaper. Now it was time to assemble the box. I added a bead of glue to each of the grooves, then spread the glue on each of the mitered corners and fit the box together. My plan was to use a ratcheting clamp that worked just fine when I tested it out the day before, but I obviously needed to read the instructions a little more, which I had thrown away. After fighting with it for an embarrassing amount of time, I set it aside and just clamped the whole thing together and let it dry overnight. The next day, I took the clamps off and gave the box a good sanding on all sides and faces with 220 grit sandpaper. Once I was finished sanding, I took the box over to my table saw and set the fence so that it would take off an inch and a quarter to make up the lid of the box. I tried putting painter's tape on the corners to prevent any tear out, but it just ended up sticking to the table saw, so I gave up on that idea and just kept working on cutting the lid off. Once the lid was cut, I sanded down the bottom of the lid and the top lip of the box to get out any saw marks. The box will have a walnut liner that will hold the lid in place, so I ripped my already milled walnut pieces to width and then started measuring them to fit snug inside the box. Since I made both chess and checkers pieces for this game board, I wanted the box to also have a divider, so I measured and cut those pieces to size until I had a nice snug fit. Once everything was ready to go, I started gluing up the liner pieces one by one. I didn't glue the center divider as it would have been a bit of a pain and really wasn't necessary anyway. I clamped all the pieces in place and set the box aside to dry. While the box was drying, I applied the finish to the lid. I used walrus oil furniture finish which I had previously used on a lap desk I built. I really like how the finish turned out on that project and I knew it would be perfect for this. It's simple to apply with just a rag and then let it soak in and dry. Watching that maple and epoxy come to life was totally worth all the effort in building this box. Once the glue was dry on the box liner, I also finished it with walrus oil. I took care to make sure it got in all of the corners and applied the finish over the entire piece, then set it aside to dry. During all of this, I was also working on the game pieces. I designed an interlocking chess set and checker set within Easel, which you can find the links to in the description below. I milled down some of the maple and walnut to 1 8 inch thick to carve the chess pieces. I used a 1 32nd down cut bit to carve the pieces out. I tried two methods to attach the wood to the board. The first was to use a combination of painter's tape and CA glue plus activator to act as double-sided tape. This worked really well in carving the pieces as there was no movement during the carve and I didn't have to deal with tabs. The downside is that there is a good amount of tape residue left over on the pieces which needed to be cleaned up. For the checkers pieces and walnut chest pieces, I used tabs and got similar results with the quality of the carve. For the checkers pieces, I used an 8 inch down cut bit and loved how they turned out. Again though, there was a little extra work with this method of carving. You have to sand the tabs down. 
I used sandpaper on the checkers pieces, but ended up using my Dremel on the chess pieces to get into the small crevices and grind the tabs down. To assemble the chess pieces, I used CA glue and activator spray. I wanted these to have an instant bond so that I wouldn't have to wait too long in order to add the finish to them. Once I had all of the pieces glued together, I poured a little bit of the furniture finish into a small cup and coated all of the pieces in it. Once they were coated, I wiped them all down with a cloth and then set them aside to dry. The finished chessboard far exceeded my expectations for this project and I couldn't be happier with how it turned out. Maybe I can get my husband and kids to teach me how to play chess so that I can enjoy this project to the fullest. My only regret is that I didn't maximize the potential of this and make the other side of the lid a backgammon game. Maybe I can still figure out a way to do that. To get all of the project details and links to the files in Easel, be sure to click the link in the description below. For more video tutorials just like this, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon. I'd also love it if you hit the like button and I always enjoy your comments. Thanks for watching.